It's time to synthesize everything that we've learned about Newman projections so far. I'm Tyler Farah, and in this video, we're going to plot energy as a molecule rotates around a single bond. We've seen that as a molecule rotates around a single bond, it passes from staggered conformation to eclipsed and then back to staggered and back to eclipsed. So the molecule is always having to pass through an eclipsed conformation in order to reach the next staggered conformation. And we've also seen that staggered conformations are generally preferable to eclipsed conformations, and the reason why is all about energy. The electron clouds of functional groups are going to repel. We call this repulsion torsional strain, and we minimize that strain, that repulsion, and thereby the molecule's energy gets minimized when we're in the staggered conformations. So the result of this is that the molecule doesn't generally cleanly, neatly spin around its single bond. Rather, it tends to prefer the staggered conformations and to get from one to the other staggered conformation, the molecule kind of clicks into place, rapidly spinning past these eclipsed conformations. Let's take a look at an example that ties all of these ideas together. In this example, we're asked to graph the energy of a molecule as it rotates through its six total conformations. That's three staggered and three eclipsed, and again, we're going to expect that it alternates staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed. So let's build a graph. What we want to graph on the y-axis is the molecule's energy, and we've got a spectrum from the lowest energy conformation to the highest, and we're going to go through the different conformations here measured by what's called torsion angle, and the uh, torsion angle of zero degrees is going to be taken to be the most stable of our molecule's conformation. Notice that our molecule actually is in its most stable conformation right now because we're taking the two largest functional groups on these uh, on the front carbon which is bromine and that is 180 degrees away from the largest functional group on the back carbon which is chlorine so we are starting out in our torsion angle of zero we're starting out in our anti-state the most stable so we're going to put this down here at the bottom now from here we know the next confirmation is going to be eclipsed so we know the energy is going to go way way up and if we take a look at this eclipsed confirmation, we know we're not at the maximum yet. Why not? Well, because we've got our largest functional groups, that chlorine and that bromine, are not quite totally eclipsed yet. In fact, in the video on eclipsed confirmations, we saw that this was actually the lowest energy of our eclipsed confirmations because our largest functional group on the front is paired with hydrogen on the back, and our largest functional group on the back, chlorine there, is paired with hydrogen on the front. So even though the energy is gonna be significantly higher, what we would expect is that we're not quite near the maximum yet. There we are. We rotate another 60 degrees, and what we find ourselves in now is a gauche conformation. In this conformation, bromine is right next to the other largest functional group, but we saw in the staggered conformation that this is not the worst of the, the gauche conformations. This is the more stable gauche, con gauche conformation. We haven't yet reached the worst staggered conformation, so we're going to have a little bit higher energy because we're, we're gauche staggered compared to anti-staggered, but definitely lower energy than any of our, um, any of our eclipsed conformations. We do another rotation, and now we have the largest functional group stacked up, so we're now at total eclipse. We're at the highest energy conformation, and, uh, and we've peaked this molecule's energy. The molecule is going to quickly spin away from this conformation to get into the next gauche conformation, which at this point is uh, the, the, the worst of the gauche conformations, but again, not as, not as bad as any of the eclipsed conformations. We round out with one more eclipse confirmation there, and I want to point out another 60 degree spin brings us back to where we started. So even though they didn't ask us for that, that you know, quote unquote, seventh confirmation, here we have arrived back at the beginning, and that is all of the confirmations of this molecule. Now there's one more point to make about this, right? The reason why we study the extremes is that this molecule is gonna, it, it's gonna take on, I mean, 360 degrees worth of confirmation. There's all these unnamed intermediate states that the molecule spins through to get from one confirmation to the next. But what we can say about these molecules is that as this bromine gets closer 
to this hydrogen as we rotate from here to here, the energy is going to get higher and higher and higher until the energy sort of peaks out in this eclipsed conformation. And then as bromine continues to rotate into this next staggered conformation, the energy will smoothly drop back down. And so we actually can predict what the energy will be throughout this entire spectrum, not just at the extremes, not just in the staggered and eclipsed conformations, but really throughout the rotation of this molecule because we understand where the extreme points lie.